in a full year. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and get started. We're so thrilled that you guys are all here today. It's going to be great. I'm so excited to get into this. This is basically going to be a simplified version of what we went through in forum on Monday. So for those of you on the classical side, we kind of had a presentation from one of the BMI people about this, uh, which was very helpful, but it did kind of go kind of fast and really get into some of the really kind of important details that we need to get into this. And for you MSP people who might not have done this, this will be a good introduction for you. But the, so we're learning today about performance right uh, organization. So what is that? Essentially, they are uh, the people who license your work to get, uh, when you have a performance, right, you're, you're essentially giving whatever organization that is that's performing live a license to play your music, and they're the people that collect the dues on that. And there's really only, I mean, there are more than these, obviously, like if you're in a different, you know, in a different country or things like that. I know there's technically CSAC, but really here there's really only two, which is uh, BMI uh, and ASCAP, right? So uh, I, I'm represented by BMI. Is anyone already, like, represented by one of these or any BMI people? Okay, so we've got a couple BMI people. How about ASCAPers? Okay, and a couple people that don't have one yet. Okay, great. So you are in the right place. So how this is going to work. One of the first questions that's going to come up with this is what track you are on. Uh, this is a very important thing. So the classical track has a slightly different thing to it than the if you're going to be like a film composer person, even though it kind of weirdly gets put in the same file as like being a songwriter. It's kind of at least the way BMI does it. Um, I know ASCAP it might be a slightly different division. So uh, what I'm going to talk about here is mostly BMI, and then we've got Craig here. He's going to be aligning essentially ASCAP. They do things a little differently than BMI does, so we're going to get into that. Um, so for instance, if you notice, if you go on the uh, on BMI uh, uh, web page here, right? Okay, so you go to classical sites. So most of you are going to do this. It's incredibly easy to join. It is very, it's very easy. So you see this here. Step one, we're going to join BMI. It doesn't cost any money. It doesn't it just it, it, you send them uh, some information. If we look at this here, you're literally all you have to do to join this thing to be eligible to get it is you send an email to it at the bottom there. It says classical at BMI. You send them your resume. It says to send a works list. You don't have to do that. Uh, you might not have any works available to do that. So you can join at any time for free. It's pretty straightforward. But here's the trick. That's for the classical track. For the classical track for film people, or if you're doing music for media, it is a slightly different thing for whatever reason. So, if you notice here, um, uh -huh. here we go, uh, you would be technically considered um, a um, oh, yeah. So, if you notice at the very top here, it's going to say, uh, this page gives information to join as a classical composer. If you are joining as a TV, film, media, whatever person, producer person, click here to join BMI, and that is going to lead you to the songwriter thing. Weirdly, it's 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 by songwriter. Now, the reason for that is how the actual royalty itself is divided. So let's talk about that for a second, because when we think of this, we think of, oh, I'm a composer, I've just written, uh, I've written music, and that should be it, right? Uh, they, they pay me money now, right? If only it was that easy, right? Well, for classical people, and this is true for, you know, um, uh, any other way of thinking about music, there's always technically two versions of the piece that exist, right? There's the side that is you, the creator person, you have made this piece, and then there is the publisher side, right? So for a lot of us, we tend to do both. Like, not many of us, I don't know if any of you guys are like, you know, published by Boozy and Hawks or whatever, you know, <laughs> probably not. You're going to be self-publishing on your own. Right? So, but this is an important distinction. Uh, you know, you have to, when you are registering the work, which I'll show in just a minute here, you have to say that you are self-publishing. You can't just be the composer, at least for BMI. You have to acknowledge who the publisher is going to be. And for most of us, it's just going to be ourselves listed uh, on that. Now, the reason that the film stuff gets put in different places is because, well, film music is like, like songs and things like that. It's not written in a way to be performed live, necessarily. It's about the recording. And so that's why there is that separation, is that who, who owns the, you know, you created the music, but then also who has created and owns the recording. So that's the key difference. So even though, like, you think there would be its own thing for, like, film composers, as, like, film composers and songwriters seem like very different things, really, it's ultimately about that single divide. 
who is the composer or the creator person of the work, and it can be multiple people. It can be a division. Like if we, let's say me and Brendan work together on, on a film score, we could split everything 50-50, you know, however we decide to do it. If we have three three-person team and you know, whatever it is, but that's the creative side, and then there's the recording side. And for the for the purposes of these royalties, those two are viewed as different things. Does that make sense? It's kind of confusing, but that's it. So Film, media stuff, it's about the recording. In the classical world, it's about the sheet music, the publishing, because that music is made to be conformed live, right? We don't like get a bunch of people together and like listen to the Spotify recording, right? It's for the orchestra to play it live, with the wind on song board, whatever it is that you're going to do. So that's why when we do this registration, I'm gonna register like a fake piece for a second just to show you exactly what it looks like. Uh, you're gonna see that you can't do anything unless it adds up to 200%. Which is kind of weird, right? But that's exactly it because it's technically doing it as two different things. Here we go. Oh boy. What's that happen? Oh, okay, great. Sorry, I thought it was a drummer guy. I was like, oh no, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> come on in, come on in. The pizza's on its way. I think it's, it is, it's running a little late. I think it's what's going on. So, anyway, let, let's talk about the actual. Uh, royalties themselves. So the way, I, and I don't have all the information on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the royalty sheet that I got from BMI this year. I'm going to show you how, at least the things that I did, how they were calculated. Now I don't know for all of them, there's like a tiered system, but anyway, so in, uh, at least for BMI, and this may be different, I think it is different for ASCAP, so we should talk about that, but for BMI, I'm pretty sure the payment is only once a year. It's a once a year. It's usually around this time and on. So everything that's happening, it's always the year previously. So the royalty sheet that I got is not for 2023 because 2023 is not over, but 2022 is. So anything that happened during that time, that is what's gonna I'm gonna get paid for. So this is my uh, this is my royalty sheet that I got this year, and I'm not trying to like you know. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay, so for this, that year, I earned $942, right? It was, a, it was a great year for me. I was really excited about it. Now, I didn't have a ton of performances. I had one piece in one performance category that pays decently well. I really only had two, two that were eligible. I had a couple more, which we'll get into. Uh, we'll get into that in just a minute. Okay, so the way I get this, it's kind of old school. That is one criticism I have of, of BMI's interface. I'll show you it in a minute. It feels like, I don't know, something made on like, Windows Vista or something like 19, like Windows 95. It's not very modern. It's not, I don't know. It's it, it, it's not modern at all. But anyway, okay. So 942, right? Scrolling down, blah blah blah. blah. Um, all their information here. So this is how it is divided. It's written here. I had one piece uh, and, and and a second piece, and that's it. I had two pieces performed. So this one here, Comet Song. And notice how it doesn't even list the instrumentation, right? It just says the source. The Comet Song is a is a is a trumpet ensemble piece. I got I got it performed, uh, and it's so they, they list it as a college chamber performance. It was performed out in the uh, I forget where it was. I think it's in somewhere in Texas. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, um, so that's what it counts for. Now that you know, I get the two hundred percent share of this, meaning that like if I had let's say I had a publisher, let's say I had like for some reason Boozy and Hawks wanted to publish my little trumpet piece three-minute trumpet piece, right? Well, if they're the publisher's share, then they're going to get half of the royalty, right? Because it's split. That's that is essentially how it works. Remember, there's the 100% creator side, and then there is the 100% publisher side, and how it's divided between multiple parties that's there and there. Because I self-publish this, I get the whole pot. I get the whole thing. Uh, now, this other one, Soaring Over the White Mountains, this is an orchestra piece, and I guess it's orchestra tier four, which I don't know if that's high, or low? I don't know. I don't. I have no idea. I've only had one happen, so I. How long does this thing be on sound? Oh, it, it's a it, it's standard like romantic era orchestra. Yeah. Okay. Triple one. Uh, was it triple one? I think it was. It was like, uh, split. It's like three two three two. Two four probably the largest. Probably that. Yeah. So that's the trick. And so now notice how it's got that, and then uh, it has some type of like credits thing. That that's how it works. And for whatever reason, that equals nine hundred dollars. So this is a performance I had with the Brockton Symphony in January of last year, 
just the one performance. That was it. And then this is what I was able to walk away from. And I didn't know that when I was just, I was just happy to even be there. <laughs> to be in the room, such a really cool surprise uh, that, that this happened. So um, anyway, but that's essentially what we get. And so more, uh, more pieces you would have, the more things that can come up from that. Uh, but generally speaking, there is kind of a hierarchy towards the larger ensemble, the larger the piece. Like if the piece was significantly larger, I do believe, uh, someone help them get in here. Um, yeah, why don't we take a quick pause? Let's get some pizza. Let's do that there, first. There are, there are a couple other parameters too that are probably provide the thing. One of which is let's, the size let's back to venue. Oh, okay, yes, let's talk about that in just a second. I know everyone wants pizza. Let's get some pizza and then we'll we'll get back into it. Okay, so brief pause. Brief pause, get some pizza and, and all that. There are plates here on this first uh, this first chair. And go ahead and get a drink, you've got plenty of cups. Yeah, let's take let's take the pause. Let's do that. Uh, premier versus non premier. Oh, yes. Yeah, like, well, I will address also yeah. rounding up. Yeah. The length of pieces you put in. Oh, yes. Oh, great. Yeah. Will you ask me that question? Yes, Because that's the thing that people don't even understand that it can be the difference between hundreds of dollars. Bring it up. Don't let me see that. Oh.
I would think that you would have liked the bad movie, but he uh, <laughs> liked the favorite visual blockbusters. <laughs> and everyone who comes over for these films are enjoying the company and yes. the, the badness. <laughs> yes. The commentary between the badness. Yes. <laughs> okay, so everyone's got some food. Yes. Everything is significantly better. I burned my tongue a little bit, though. Hey, that's good. <laughs> that's, why that's why we're here. I mean, they're hot and fresh. <laughs> that's that's what we're looking for. Okay, so we'll get into this and then we can. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, there were a couple of things that were brought up while we were taking the break there. Remind me the question that you were going to ask. Um, these are just comments. Yeah, yeah, this is great. Yeah, yeah. So when you're signing up for a piece, okay, let's say that your piece is eight minutes and thirty seconds, okay. You could fundamentally put 10 minutes as a estimated time, which will pop you up significantly for the length of work that you're applying for, because you don't know what performance it will be. If your, if your program tells you 8 minutes and 30 seconds, it is not crazy to think that they will perform it slow enough to get that up to 10 minutes. If you have a chain of work that hits the 10 minute mark, it is significantly categorized different than a five minute chamber work. Okay? The pay difference is hundreds of dollars. Okay? So when you're looking at whatever piece you're putting up, always round up for whatever that is. Now don't go five minutes, but within a minute and a half, no one's gonna bat an eye. Okay? Especially for the niche that you're in. Um, what was the other one? Um, oh. Premiere versus repeat. Yes. Your premiere is weighted so much heavier in terms of your pay than a repeat. Reason for why the incentive is just write another piece. Um, the more premieres, the more money. The repeat will only be diminished by like, I think it's like 80% difference. It's what would pay you the 800 something would only pay you maybe 50 to 100 bucks for the repeated performance. It's a little different for orchestral works, I know that much, but for anything that is small chamber, it will be butchered by its repeated performance in terms of the royalty, which you're still being paid, so be happy, but know that your premieres will always, reason for why you register them, will pay you the big bucks. Yeah. Tagging on that, it's a very good point when you bring it up three times, so, you know, with this, Sometimes it is good, like if you're not able to, let's say there's a busy deadline, you're not always able to register the work until like you know later on after you know, perform. That's okay as long as it's in the if it, if it is within the year that it happened, right? Or at least it, or slightly earlier than that. Unless it's after that. Oh, you know that's true. We should clarify this. Everything that I'm really talking about here is BMI centric. We're going to answer some questions about ASCAP in just a second. So if you're interested in that, they are slightly different. They overall do essentially the same thing, but they do it in a different way. So coming back to this idea, when I registered this work, when in my thing, the piece is actually decently fast, but the conductor just did not really ever get it even close to the tempo. So it added a good two or three minutes to it that isn't in the thing, and I totally put, I totally put the length of the recording as it, because other people, because that's the that's the reality is that another conductor they're going to want to do it, they're not going to be like, I don't want to hear the recording, I will study the score. They're not going to do it. They're going to hear the recording. And they're like, oh, okay, that's what that guy did. That's what he did. That's what I mean, it shouldn't be like that, but it is what it is. So anyway, it's just an important thing to think about, like, you know, that time difference of how it is actually performed, how white people do it, versus, like, what the estimated time is in Sibelius, because Sibelius or Finale or whatever isn't going to make any mistakes, isn't going to take a breath, isn't going to be in the middle of a piece, like a solo piece and need a second. Just things like that, they do add up to the piece. Um, so that's great. That's really wonderful to bring up. I think Brendan, you had a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah please. Yes, that's a very good, uh, important question. So the whole point of this, why we are doing this, why we're talking about it, is because SCI does, uh, if you have a performance with SCI, I want to be very clear, with SCI, not necessarily with, with the department, it's like a slightly different thing, but for sure with, the, uh, with SCI, you are eligible to get these royalties for the performances of your work. So, for instance, if you're going to submit for the open call concert that's going to be uh, talked about next week and happening in September and you get it played, well, then you can get paid for that. That's why we want to do this is we want you to be savvy. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're going to be a composer, that's meaning, that means that you're a business owner. Like, that's like your, those are your assets that you are making that are going to be 
working for you. So that's why we're going over this, is because I know for me, like in my master's program, we didn't even talk about this. I had no idea what to think. I mean, I literally, I had no idea. So, you know, and I, I there's no telling how many about not that many, but anyway, you know, not, the things that I've missed out on because of that. So that's why we want you to have this information, because, you know, it, you're going to have stuff performed here anyway. You might as well get paid for it, right? The university already pays the, for the license, the score. So, Take advantage. And the universities of this. already sucked enough money out of that, and that is a very true thing. That is a very true thing. So anyway, that's a brilliant question. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, okay, so let's talk about this. Um, oh yeah, uh, examples of the good and the bad. Um, so uh, something, at least with BMI, and this will probably be very difficult to ask. Yeah. Something to keep in mind. I did one year lose a royalty because I did. Well, one, I didn't realize that. The work had gotten caught by BMI. I didn't even know that it happened. It was like a little grass quartet or something. But <laughs> I had changed, I had moved, but I had not updated my address and I didn't have it set to direct deposit. And so I found out like two years later when I did get paid for something, I was like, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, what is this thing? And I was like, you know, hey, it's like a hundred bucks that I could have had that just is gone. That I, you know, if you, if you didn't cash the check, it's gone forever now. So, when you sign, if you sign up for BMI, make sure to do direct deposit and make sure your information is up to date because it's a one-shot payment. And if you miss it, or you know, if you want to do it by check and you're not living here, you might, live, like I did, miss it, and that's not really great. It's kind of clunky that way. So just be aware of it. Also, the interface is not my favorite. Nine times out of ten, when I log in here, it like has me reset my password. I don't know why it does that, but like literally every time. I mean, look, look at this thing. Look, look at how ancient. This, uh, this, this, month. okay, this is what it looks like. This is the home page already red flag, right? I have to zoom in to this thing, right? Okay, we're already here. Okay, and I mean, it's it's pretty, I mean, it's it's not bad, it's fine. Like, I've got you know, the works catalog, the, the royalty statements, but everything, like, look at this. Like, I can't even, I have to really re sign in already. That's the one thing, it's really clunky. So, let's say, uh, uh for instance, sorry, this. This is what I mean by like, it's really funky. You always have to click three times. Yeah, I have updated that password like 30 times. <laughs> and for whatever reason, every time I log in. So, I mean, it, it's not super user friendly. Now, that being said, um, Deidre, the person that was here, is actually super friendly. I actually found an old email thread I had with her like 10 years ago, uh, which is kind of funny that she's still doing it. And it's like, oh, I, yes, I have had you before. Um, so that is like the one plus side of it, but it's not a great interface. Um, yeah, so that's really the only kind of bad experience that I've had with it. For the most part, it has been good. Once it's set up right and you're paying attention to it, 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 it works pretty well. It does not take very long to register work. It, it is incredibly easy. You literally just give it the title. How long is it? You do the publisher share 200% if you're self-publishing or if you have someone doing that for you. And then you're kind of done. It really doesn't take very long. Um, so, do we have any questions that I can answer on the BMI end before we switch over to the ASCAP? Everyone feel okay? Everyone's just like, please. Yes, please. So, if I put my music on Spotify, mm -hmm. will I transfer the royalty? Mm -hmm. I believe for that, that counts as a different thing because that is, again, the recording versus the like sheet music. So that's like a separate thing. But you, I believe you still can, but I don't know if you would get the like full, like the Spotify recording is only the like creator side, not the publisher side. And then you would need to have some kind of other account connected to get the recording. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it is a recording of a published print whole thing. Does that oh, make sense? So this is for sheet music. This is for sheet music, oh, what I've been talking about. Now BMI can be used for those other things, okay. like the, the so-called songwriter track that we we're talking about, which is the recording-based thing. Absolutely. Um, I, I don't have anything like that out there, so I haven't interacted with it. But is anyone here who has? Okay, great. So yeah, you wanna actually this might be a good transition point. Okay. Yeah. Um, because unless there's any other questions for BMI. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay. <laughs> well, what do you think of the recording? Release commercially, they get one like the electro. There's this take to it. A code, organization. Yeah, a code for that song that whenever it gets played, then it's supposed to get shot through the database or whatever. And if you ever have something recorded through a label, they will ask you, Are you BMI, ASCAP, what is your era? 
and they won't. So it all syncs up like that. So I had a piece that is on a compilation album, and my last year, my statement from that, I got sixty cents. Breaking <laughs> 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 it in from recordings. Yeah, that is the world of contemporary music in the classical side. Right? Okay. Now, for those of you who remember, on Monday, uh, Deirdre had mentioned that if you sign up in ASCAP, you want to get everything you're owed, like this young man has to do, but he gets it right away because it's all one account. In ASCAP, you have to sign up with two accounts. So, you're getting your whole thing. That is half of what I'm actually getting, because the other half is through my uh, publishing account. Which is still you. Which is still me, so it's all going to the same place. So I can kind of look at this and multiply by two. I'm like, yep, that's my thing for April of 23 for those three months. I'm going to see what's right now. What do you want to know about? I mean, <laughs> this is the. What kind of good experiences have you had with ASCAP? Is there anything about it that you're like, no, this is a great, I wish I knew this before? I want to actually just get back to that little page. If I go dashboard right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, my membership page. Hey, I have 72 works registered in here. Great. And so far this year, I'm sitting at 430 bucks. Woo! And yeah. Let's multiply that by two. Yes, sir. Um, so I, I'm an ASCAP user myself. Okay. I have a very bad one. Um, and I know how to register work, but actually I don't remember how to uh, notify them that performances have happened. All right. Let's get into works. We can. Okay. We'll get to that one. On stage. And there are two things with that. ASCAP on stage platform. Not for recording classical events. So you go all the way down to that. If you're looking at you know, things in our classical repertoire, let's go here. So you see how I had gotten there? Sure. We had your works on stage. So if I play, like here, I played at the 8th Street Ale House <clears throat> on the 1st of January in 2017. And I have a set list for that that I played that evening. And I Hey, you're, the, you're the crap that I put, and then you go through the steps of what it is, where was it, who are you, so on and so forth. I don't think it's going to let me continue unless I put the information in. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So, okay. I should, I should clarify that too. It, it looks like it's a slightly different thing uh, with BMI. With that, if you're going to report a, a, a classical concert, it's literally just an email to BMI at classical. And they have on the website um, a list of the things that you need. Of the things that you need, you need the title of the work, and you just you know, show who you are, who is playing it. But most importantly, most importantly, this is one that I've had an issue with. We'll talk about it, but uh, is who is the presenter? The presenter is the person who has the license. If there is no presenter, even if it is obvious as to who they are, and it's not listed on the program, they're not going to pay you. I had that happen. I had a performance happen at the University of Nebraska, but the teacher there it was like a saxophone for The teacher there, she like made the program on her own. It was like a word document. It just it was literally just like a piece of paper with like saxophone piece number one, number four, and whatever. And there's no there's no information about it. I remember sending it to them. I was like, hey, I want this happen. They're like, yeah, it needs to it needs to clearly state who the presenter is. And if we don't have that, we can't do this. I did lose out on that because I didn't. So that's just something that you really got to keep in mind. But that being said, they're really quick. Like, I didn't get like a, a bot to answer me. It was like literally the first one, hey, this is what we need. Can you please do this and that? So, yeah, it sounds like it's a slightly different uh, process. Pretty much the same process. Yeah, same but, process. Go ahead. The time frame is a little bit different. Yeah. So, yeah, like, three months in ASCAP. So, yeah, BMI is, quarter, is semesterly. Like, they have larger sections. As, uh, ASCAP, on the other hand, we're quarterly. So, if you don't submit or register the piece within that time frame of the three month set, you're out of luck. Now, that can sometimes be the performance and the piece is written on the back end of those three months. 
So you really only have weeks to submit it or you don't get paid. Now the positive to that is that you get paid more often and there is pros and cons to that, mostly pros, that's brand. <laughs> but it means you have to be way more on top of your submissions and also your programs that you do submit so they can get cataloged into that. There is a caveat where they will honor previous performances, I think up to two, two quarters, two or three quarters. But it's, it's but... not, you can't do it all the time. It's like, you have to show that that is a significant performance and a premiere for them to count it in that year window. And even then, they still might not because <coughs> they're fickle. Uh, I will say that my ASCAP relationships, even with meeting the representation people, have not been to the glory that I have seen BMI do. But ASCAP plays nicer if you do things that aren't classical. You can be more versatile to what you're claiming for what your work is in, very, in a variety of different departments than just say you're a classical composer. So if you do classical and do songwriter and you do um, film and all these other little things, ASCAP can actually be really nice with dancing through those without having you to sign up or make no accounts or you know, specify your distinction. And another I know that those caveats that I mentioned on your length, size, and um, where do play a factor. Reason for why you bolster what is <laughs> those numbers um, for the sake of looking good. Because again, you're registering it, it exists. How much micromanaging is happening on that front? They're not there. They will never be there. They're also not looking at your YouTube. But these exist. Round it up by a minute, no one's going to break you. Plus, the person that's paying you is probably like some obscure Ariana Grande song playing in a bar. So, like, what, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to pay you. They're happy you did it. Yeah. Um, but that quarterly thing is something you really have to keep in mind. The, yeah, I mean, that's, that's with it as well as the registration of a work. Is this something for the concert? It goes. Part of that, uh, and like Dallas is saying too. Yeah, since I do a bunch of things performance-wise, jazz world, and I'm writing more for concert stage types of things, I can do both of that in one account and not have to worry about anything. So as we point out, from, hey, I played at the It's Me House. I got paid for that, and that and played played a bunch of original crap on that evening, and it ended up being, I don't know, an extra fifty bucks at the end. Or not the end of the night, but three months in. <laughs> also, if you're a performance uh, a composer performer, Lord help you, learning this system will pay you more than whatever gig you're playing at. <laughs> a lot of times, yes. Because what is a new premiere besides more money? And if you're a composer performer, every time you pick up your instrument, you could argue, is a new piece. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I have moral issues with those avenues, but at the same time, everyone should be able to pay their rent. <laughs> so if I, you know, you're talking about positive and negatives, I'm going to go to the, uh, bye forever. See you later. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Oh, wait, that's foundation, right? Ask that foundation first. Yeah, this is the, it's both good and bad. Programs and grants, they have, I know BMI has it as well. A whole bunch of different awards and so on and so forth. Except my problem with this has always been, let's say that I want to apply for that. There is absolutely no deadline date as to when these materials need to be. I even sent them something. That was the one message I remember the time before in my account was, hey, you have all these things, but you never tell me what the deadline is. I know that the Rudolf Nissim Large Ensemble Award thing is coming up this fall. I think the deadline is like November, mid late November, something like that. Something like that. But if I look at it on their thing, they 
since it's coming up, it might actually be in there, but I'm not holding my breath that it is. Most of the time they name the month and it's arbitrary and they'll give you the date. It's not even listed here, the Rudolph Newsome thing. Barely late to it. But for most for most of the ad campaign being in mind, you're pretty much looking at like end of November, early December, or oh, January first. Yes. Like it's literally the three dates that they always pick. I want to apply to the Johnny Mandel Prize. There it is. It's, 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 yeah, I can see past recipients, but there's no... You also have to realize that both ASCAP and BMI have those grants yep. listed on the website, but they're actually for independent pro like, um, schools. A lot of them are, yes. But other things... They're still listed on there, yeah. but they're already Other, other things to that you can just directly program. apply to. And that's where I'm more confident. Uh, you know, the other aspect, too, I've noticed well, like yeah, in order to apply for the number of seat, you have to be a member of ASCAP. So there's a large on something I was talking about before, the Rudolph Pinson Award, which you know, what's that like a five thousand dollar paycheck if you win? Pretty sure. Well, but my competition is not gonna be dated for that because he's a member of the other organization. However, I'm pretty certain BMI also has a similar thing going there. Yeah, I don't know much about them. They, they do have yeah. Yeah. So th there is that. There are uh, other other independent things that occur. Uh, one that I do with the Symphonic Jazz Orchestra is out of Los Angeles, and they have a what, composition grant program set up. But on their do the ASCAP Foundation. Da, 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 da. I don't know if you specifically have to be member ASCAP for that, since it's going to a third party, but it has that ASCAP endorsement too. Um, in general, though, I'd say extremes would have been opposite. I and I was going to say, maybe maybe at this point, it would be good if any of you, like, you know, any of you who haven't spoken up yet, what group are you with? What's been good? What's been bad? Yeah. It'd be great to just share a little bit if there's, you know, any glaring or, or very wonderful positive experiences. Because if not, we, we might uh, call it a day. Well, so and actually, that's the other point that I wanted to make. <laughs> what we were talking about yeah. uh, the other day. Um, was that and I'd asked about it, and we didn't know what the answer was, but I think it was last year, it was very recently, in the last couple of years, BMI changed over from a non-profit organization to a for-profit organization. ASCAP is still non-profit. Maybe that means something to you in one way, shape, or form, but I mean, it's like we said too, it's like, well, the ramifications of this decision of BMI haven't been fully realized yet, or we haven't, are not fully aware of it. But if we look back at other organizations, the National Football League, for the longest time, was a nonprofit organization until about five years ago. Yes, this multi billion dollar corporation is a nonprofit organization, which is why we could always find out how much the commission of the NFL made. And you can sit there and say, well, Roger Goodell sitting in his office in New York, and he's making $35 million a year for that, or whatever the heck the total was. Well, part of the nonprofit organizations, you have to release financial information to make it available to the public. If you are a for profit business, you don't have to share that. So, you know, yeah. little things like that. So, all of a sudden, one of the uh, things too is that when NFL was a non profit organization, the biggest beneficiary from all that, from what I could tell based on their advertisements, was the United Way. As soon as they changed over to a for profit uh, business model, the United Way has not had a single advertisement in any NFL game. No one's gonna remember that. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying it's these little things that, that, that can't add up, you know. Definitely, definitely. So. And an important thing to, to consider for sure. So uh, guys, if there's any any more questions we have, we don't want it to go forever. We just wanted to give you, you know, do you feel like you have enough to get started to, to work on this and have, you know, uh, somewhere to go? <laughs> I hope so, anyway. Uh, so if there are no more, oh yes, sir. Say I wanted to switch from one to the other. Is that possible? It, it is, is possible. Yeah, it's definitely possible. It's However, possible to do it, it is a one. nightmare. <laughs> From those that I have, have spoken to, there's a person of mine during my master's who was switching over. He You're was right. just shaking his head the whole time. He's like, this is a freak nightmare. But he was not he was not happy with ASCAP and how things were doing there. And he wanted to switch over to BMI. And it was just a royal nightmare. Because you can only be a member of one. They do not also appreciate if you try to switch back. <laughs> yeah. Is this from yeah. personal experience? No, from personal people telling me how much of a nightmare it was. Because someone was 
um, ASCAP, they went to BMI, but then they did so many other side things that wasn't counted in BMI. So they were like, well, I want that money too. So I might as well just go back and take the L on the one aspect that I need to do better on reporting. Because ASCAP, like BMI, I feel like does a way better job if you miss it, they'll catch it and tell you about it. ASCAP will be like, your money, my, not my problem. Yeah. You know? um, but they tried to switch back and it was a nightmare to get them to be like, well, loyalty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, not definitely, I, I've only ever heard horror stories about that, not recommend it. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're unsure, you just kind of have to pick one and it'll be fine. Like there are, it's not. I mean, it, it's going to be okay. You might, you're, you're. It's a, it's, it's a pick your poison sort of situation, right? I mean, whatever interface you want to work with, whichever one. I mean, that's I'm pretty sure I get flipped a coin on. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> and honestly, that's kind of it. Are there small important differences? Of course there are, but at the end of the day, it's worth picking one and just getting started with that. So, yeah, if there are no more questions, let's just hang out and have pizza. One more thought. Okay, okay. sure. Yeah. Is that uh, it was the second time that I've been able to sit in on one of the, the what, presentations done by Yuka. And the big thing, my big takeaway with that with her, she's a wonderful representative of her organization. And in that she never once bashes the other team. She's commonly working with the other team. It's like, yeah, sometimes I gotta call, you know, go across the hall essentially and talk to you know somebody over at ASCAP. I knew that she knew where it was right off the top of her head. And what was my other thing that we were talking about? Because I mentioned the other day. No, no, no. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. that, that but yeah, but that's, I, that's all I remember. Also, not promoting at the same time, just like we decided. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, they're there to help you. Yeah. And also, you are living in a niche where you are never going to be the one that's paying their check. <laughs> right. So they're really there to help you. Yes. And the system is. That, in existence to benefit us who are feeding off the grandeur of the engine. Yeah. Which, again, if you really want to go into <laughs> why this money exists, every single freaking bar, gas station that has music playing, has money transfer hands, has a license that pays money. Mm -hmm. As long as there's money and sound, they get those licenses. So. Okay, so I think that's it. Thank you so much for coming. Have some pizza, hang out, chill. But yeah, that's kind of where we are. Yeah. 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 Yeah.